Welcome to the Flower Essence Podcast and join us on an exploration of the healing wisdom of flowers. With combined decades of experience in the study and practice of flower essence therapy, I, Kathleen Aspens, and co-host Rokana Feld guide you to reconnect to nature with these potent vibrational remedies. Flower Essence friends. I'm Rokana Feld, and in this episode, Kathleen Aspens and I discuss more holiday coping strategies with flower and gem essences, this time focused on holiday travel and socializing. Traveling can be stressful at any time of the year, but the holiday season adds extra stress, even for the most experienced jet setters. And if you are a highly sensitive person, HSP for short, introvert or empath, holiday travel and social situations can be extra tricky and really take their toll. So let's just dive right in, Kathleen. In our previous Emergency Essences episode, we talked about some off-the-shelf formulas like the Five Flower uh, Rescue Remedy and the Yes Yarrow Environmental Solution as being excellent for some of these uh, concerns. But I know that there's specific travel formulas. Would you like to get started talking about some of those? Absolutely. I'm really happy to do that. The one that I think of the most is Travelese from Alaskan Essences. And that was designed for all of the challenges um, electromagnetic stress, stress from crowding and having your boundaries smooshed into a little tiny box in order to get into a plane. Um, all of these things are part of travel and the travel ease formula is extremely helpful for helping you deal with them. I really recommend if you're taking a longer flight, um, anything sort of not your normal sort of traveling is to think about starting your taking these essences ahead of your travel. Even if it's up to a week, perhaps can be really useful, especially if you're traveling across, you know, multiple time zones or you're doing international travel. There's a level of geopathic stress that occurs just from crossing that many miles because our bodies are just not designed for that. And it takes a toll on you. And one of those things that can show up is that your sleep gets disrupted or you feel really jet lagged or out of your body. And part of that is a geopathic stress just from going over that many that many thousands of miles in such a short period of time. Using the uh, the, the Travelese flower essence uh, in drops, put it in your water and go ahead and keep putting it in your water as you travel and as you return. And then also the spray version is incredibly helpful for you to use as you're traveling. Fortunately, it's available in a two ounce size and so it travels well. And I'll just keep it just kind of missed over my heart as I'm, as I'm in my, in my seat. And usually that's just fine to do. And it's something nice that helps you remember to breathe, helps you remember to kind of center yourself and be in your own space as you're, you know, enduring the challenges of travel. And what's in the travel ease? You want to talk a little bit about some of the components? I know one aspect is the black tourmaline, which I love for, Uh, part of that electromagnetic protection, but also protection from other people's energies and negativity. Yeah, for sure. The one, some of the big components of travelies are these gem elixirs and gem elixirs are, are really stabilizing and helpful in your energy field of your body. So having these, these essences on board as, as it was, as you travel can be really helpful to help keep your boundaries really, really strong and help you keep from absorbing the energetic stresses, whether those are geopathic or whether it is other people's stuff. Um, like you say, black tourmaline really throws off the crud. It throws off the energetic toxins. Kavalite is a really great, um, gem essence for your boundaries. It's this really neat dark blue crystal, well, more of a stone really than a crystal, I think. And it has these qualities of strengthening your, your field, your auric field, so that nothing can get through that you don't want to get through. Smoky quartz also is part of the formula and really helpful for that energetic toxicity as well. Really helps to clear your, your energetic field. 
So those are the gems that form the heart of the Travelese formula that really helps. And then there's two flowers part of it that really speak to your boundaries and helping you feel safe and secure even as you're dealing with you know, all the crowding and all the, you know, you're getting jammed into a little tiny seat and it's, the energy is really funky. (laughs) So yarrow is an incredibly important essence for travel, just in general. Anytime you're in an environment that's not your own and you're not really well supported, the yarrows of all the different kinds of yarrows are useful. This is a white yarrow that's included in this formula. And then white violet is another one that's very, very helpful. I remember Steve Johnson talking about this formula and and how he created it. He was doing a lot of international travel um, to teach about essences, and he talked about one trip that he took to Japan, I think, and he said he had the incredible bad luck of being, you know, finding himself in a middle middle row, in a middle seat. (laughs) And he said that there were just, he was jammed in there for hours and hours, and he wasn't a little guy, you know, so... um, and he said there's children, there was crying babies sort of strategically placed around the plane. And it was just really stressful. He's, he was a very sensitive person, very energetically sensitive person, as you would probably expect for a flower essence maker like both of us are, right? And he said white violet just kind of helped him to just have the sense of space that he, you know, no matter all this stuff is going on, but I still am in my space and I'm protected in that. Are you familiar with the violets? Have you used them? I do. And I love all the violets as well for any kind of being sensitive to the environment and the energies around you. It kind of, you know, brings in that sort of personal sanctuary feeling. There's a cool, a coolness to them. Yeah, that's, that's right. Well, they, you know, they're part of that very early spring energetic. Um, and so they do have that quality of coming out before all the trees leaf out. And so they, they're able to sort of take that sunlight and transform it into the flowering. And it does, they're, they're such delicate little flowers that you kind of only notice them after you've passed them, right? They have that kind of fugitive little fragrance and they're, they're so small and delicate and so close to the ground. And yet they really hold their own space. So they, anytime you spend time with them, you feel like, it's okay to just be you, just, you know, you can be small and in the corner, but you're safe where you are. Yeah, and the violets I've worked with, the flowers, they kind of ha- have their heads under the leaves. You can't really, a lot of times, even see that it's flowering until you sort of brush aside the big round heart-shaped leaf, which is also part of its signature, that gentle, loving, supportive heart focused, heart-based energy. And it's really protected by that. So I I kind of look at it as being protected by its own sensitivity, which is sort of an oxymoron, but it's, you know, it's using its love aura to (laughs) give itself the, the boundaries and protections that it needs. I like what you're saying, because I think that's, that's been my experience also, is that it has such a sense of presence, even though compared to us, it's really tiny, (laughs) but it's just, it's safe in its own space. And it has this quality of, they, it grows in these lovely little drifts and so, but they all have their own space. They're not crowded and they're, they have plenty of space and they're just safe in their own little, little area that they grow. And I, I think you're right that that has that quality that creates a sense of spaciousness within you, even if you may not be in a literally spacious place at all. Right. And then also there's the yarrow, as you mentioned, and I've, I've uh, phrased that before as being like an energetic bubble wrap. (laughs) And I always think about the white yarrow that way. So I think that's perfect in this situation. And as you were saying, you know, when you're sitting crammed into public transportation of any kind, Um, But especially an airplane where you have nowhere to go, you have to, you're just, you know, subject to the, you know, the whims of fate as far as what, who you're sitting next to and if there's crying babies, (laughs) whatever you may encounter on public transportation. When you think of, you know, our personal space, our our aura, there's different schools of thought about how far that goes out from our body, but 
it does go out from our body. And it definitely were overlapping auras with the people that we're with in these tight, cramped spaces. You know, you don't have to be physically touching, but energetically, we're basically up in each other's grills. <laughs> and it can be so very uncomfortable if, you know, you're not resonating with that person's energy. If they're just, you know, you did, for whatever reason, they could be a perfectly fine individual, but you're not resonating with that energy and it's uncomfortable to be that close to them. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's the wonderful blender that is the airport. You can be, you, you run into all sorts of energetics that are just not ones that you would intentionally run into. They're not, they're not sort of your, your, a good energetic match for you and helping support yourself as you do that, because that's just reality. That's just part of, of the process. The, these formulas that help create this, this sense of containment and purity of your own field, I guess I would use that word because it's just your field. And even though it bumps up against other fields, you can keep your field from being overwhelmed by their field. I think that's kind of an energetic that, that makes some sense to me is the stronger your field is, the less likely it is to feel that someone is invading your field. I absolutely agree. I think that's a good advice in general when, you know, you're feeling like you need more protection because you're being bombarded with other energies. Uh, a good place to start is just to ground yourself and to feel your own core energy solidifying so that is the, the, the basic first step to really have any effective uh, protection and to not need as much protection as well. Yeah, even just recognizing the need for grounding. I think that traveling is, is kind of an inherently ungrounded experience. <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of how it is, you know, especially if you're flying, you could not be less grounded. Um, but when you land or even before you leave, just to sort of notice your feet, even if they're in shoes on concrete or whatever, you know, noticing the action of your feet and, and, and imagining pretending that your feet have little rootlets and that your little rootlets can get down into the ground, no matter how far they have to travel through this concrete or whatever it is underneath your feet and helping to remind yourself that you belong to the earth, that you belong where you are. It can help bring you back into, um, it's, it's a groundedness. It, when you're, it's the opposite of that ungroundedness when you're all up in your head and you're sort of distracted and anxious and, and fluttery, reminding yourself, ah, oh, I am a creature of the earth. I, my feet touch the earth. Even if there's some obstacles in the way, I'm still part of gravity here. I'm still connected to the planet. And that can help to change that dynamic where you can get really spun out. Yeah, and I even recommend carrying a physical gemstone like the black tourmaline or another highly grounding and protective stone, a rock from your driveway, you know, <laughs> any any stone really, <laughs> but, you know, you can get more creative with it to have in the pocket uh, while you're traveling and especially up in the air. I think that's really helpful to just, it's something for your hands to do too while you're sitting there. Yeah, that's that that's makes a lot of sense too because you can just have your hand in your pocket and just be you know touching touching your little stone. Um, you are going to have to take that out of your pocket when you go through the radar yes. detector. <laughs> You're not going to be able to walk through that with <laughs> when you have big stones in your in your luggage. They really are get, they're very fascinated by them. They are heavy. You don't have to have a big one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can. The small ones work just fine. It's really not a problem. It's not about size, anyways. Um, Guardian is also another one. I'm, I'm sure we've talked about it before, but Guardian from the Alaskan Essences is another one that's very helpful for reestablishing your sense of grounding and reestablishing your sense of, of boundary. And that can be a nice, it, there's a lot of overlap with the Travel East formula and Guardian, but those are two formulas that are, that are worthwhile to be thinking about uh, as you do that. One of the, the topics that to me seems really, it's, it's a little bit not obvious to me, but it's apparent to me whenever I'm traveling because I do so much work with animals and I'm always thinking about behavior and, 
and the way the world works through the, through the lens of animal behavior, because, you know, we are mammals and we do act a lot like animals as well. We just like to pretend that we're not, but whenever you put animals in a stressful circumstance and you crowd them, they're going to tend to do either one of two things. They're going to get aggressive and hostile, or they're going to get more shut down and, and sort of escape into themselves into a dullness. And you can see this taking place as you're going through the TSA line. You'll see some people are just ready to start something <laughs> with somebody, which fortunately it's not very many of them, but that's just a normal response to having your boundaries stopped. That's a normal response to having your sense of autonomy and personhood taken away from you. And I'm using personhood very broadly because your dog will do the same thing if you don't treat him or her like um, a sentient being. And so you can get that and you know, you're going to be dealing with some hostility from, you know, people who are working there or whatever, and being able to recognize what's causing that it's the crowding, it's the stress, it's the, you know, being crowded is stressful. And any, anybody, you know, I, I love Temple Grandin. I love to, to read her books on animal behavior and management because she's getting just really real about what happens when you crowd animals and you stress them. This is what happens. I, I think that she should be designing our airports, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. It, they'd be much more pleasant places to be, wouldn't they? So if you, if you think about you know, if you're prone, if you are, know that you're prone to that, you can help yourself manage it with some essences. Um, Beach uh, from Dr. Bach um, is a really helpful one for that sort of aggressive, agitated. Um, we, we oftentimes use that little shorthand of like when you're feeling beachy, beachy, beachy. Um, <laughs> and then Holly's also really helpful for that feeling of just like it's Dr. Bach said vexations of the heart. So whenever you're just feeling like you're not getting what you need and this is just not working for me and I'm just feeling like nobody gives a damn, you know, having some Holly on board can be really helpful as well. I really like what you're saying about uh, thinking in terms of, of animal reactions and having that observation about how, how they react in these situations because it reminds us that, you know, we have these animal emotions and we don't think about that or we forget about that when we're totally wrapped up in our mind and our mental thought processes but yet those things are happening and they often take us by surprise because we aren't paying attention to them so that flying off the handle the anger or just the shutting down and having a horrible time are exactly what I see as well with, with these situations. So it's really interesting and uh, a good idea. I like thinking about uh, that, not that we want to think of ourselves as animals, but why not? We are. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't mind, but you know, the, the idea that some people might not, uh, it just might be a form a foreign thought process for some folks. Right. Yes. I'm always really careful when I introduce the idea because some people are, you know, it's, 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 it can be really like people can get very upset about talking about humans in that way. But I think that it just makes us more relatable. And for me, it just helps me understand people better when I, when I go, Oh yeah, he's doing that because he's scared you know, or, or she's doing that because she's feeling powerless and she's going to react that way. Oh, okay. You know, then I, then I'm coming at it from like, Oh, that guy's a jerk. Instead, I'm going to going, ah, oh, I wonder what we can do to help make this better. It's actually a form of emotional intelligence to really, to, to be able to see that and think that way. So I like it a lot. I did want to mention too, that the Alaskan travel ease formula um, it also comes in a spray with essential oils, which is lovely, as all their um, ar aromatic sprays are. But I would not recommend spraying that in a confined space on the plane. Please, you know, have sensitivity to the close quarters and not uh, inflict aromas on others who might be allergic or sensitive. I mean, there's no place for that smell to go in an airplane. So a lot of people talk about taking essential oils on the plane for calming down. And if you'd like to do that, uh, I recommend getting one of those uh, nasal aromatherapy inhalers. They look like the little Vicks inhaler tubes, and you can make a personal inhaler that only you will smell. 
And you can even spray some of that travel ease onto the cotton wick inside the aroma uh, tube and use that. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I've I've used the the travel ease spray on the plane um, before, and what I do is I check with my seatmate or, you know, on each side and see if that's okay with them. Uh, and, and I've never really had problems with anybody, but it's really appropriate to ask. Fortunately, these, these sprays are made with a very low amount of oil. So it doesn't tend to sort of invade a space in the way that if you were uncapping an essential oil bottle, you know, neat and applying it, it doesn't tend to invade. And I, when I use it, I tend to just, just mist it right over my heart, really close to my body rather than sort of getting way over my head and just, you know, going to town. Um, so uh, yeah, it's interesting. I think you should be really s- sensitive to the people around you because they too are stressed. <laughs> and sometimes that can be helpful. Like, would you like to have some too? And, but yeah, I think you're right in that you want to be really cognizant of, of what you're, Um, putting into the environment because not everybody wants that. Yeah. And just from my aromatherapy background too, you know, some people can be allergic to even the most benign things like lavender. I know people who can't even walk by a lavender plant without going into an allergic reaction. And the way that smoke can travel, you know, there might be somebody a couple rows behind you, Um, that you didn't have a chance to ask. So I think just for, you know, as a general rule, um, you know, it's better to try to have it in a, in a, in something like an aroma inhaler, uh, that doesn't go out into the air, but yet you can put your nose, you can put that right up to your nose and get a big, nice whiff. And actually, uh, it's a little even more, um, efficient way of using it in that, in that situation when you're not trying to, um, spray the room like some of their room sprays. Also, from the perspective of a highly sensitive person or HSP, as I mentioned, those are a subset of the population that have extremely sensitive um, senses and smell being one of them. And so I can attest to being able to smell things that other people can't smell. <laughs> and, uh, and that's part of also the stress of traveling for an HSP and being completely out of control in an environment that's got maybe, uh, smells, bright lights, loud sounds, uh, all of these things that can really hammer us and, uh, make it a harder thing to do. So all these essences that we're talking about are extremely valuable for the highly sensitive person. And the good news is that if you're using just pure flower essences, there's no chance that you'll be causing problems for anyone else because there's something that you'll be using internally or on your skin perhaps, but there's no smell or taste that could be creating any issues for anyone around you. That's one of the best things about flower essences is that there's really no chance of harm. Yay. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. And so the, the other element to that stressed and overwhelmed is that, that quality of being shut down. And I think that that's a really crucial part that's, you know, really baked into the traveling system when you're kind of treated like cattle and, and, you know, stuck into a line that winds around and around. And then, you know, you, you have to, be made uncomfortable by taking your clothes off, <laughs> at least your outer clothes and your shoes and, you know, all your things and you're, you're, you're hustled along by the people right behind you. And it's very stressful. And so a lot of people do tend to shut down a bit and you can just look around the people around you. If you're standing in line like that, you see that they're not, everybody's just kind of got a dullness to them. They're just trying to endure and you can help bring back some of that light. You know, this is, this is sort of an injury to the shen. This is an injury to the spirit that has to be endured while you go, while you travel. And I think star of Bethlehem can be a really worthwhile helper in bringing, bringing your light back and bringing the part of you back that had to go away in order to go through that. And that's, that's sort of a, a sweet part of ourselves that we'd hate to lose for extended periods of time. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that soul crushing process. Literally, it is to go yeah. through an airport and travel these days. It's definitely an aspect to the challenge. 
Yeah, it, it literally is soul crushing. <laughs> it's, you know, it from from start to start to finish, you know, you, you have to get onto a plane and you get stuffed into a seat and you can't move around and you can't, you know, you don't, you're on somebody else's schedule. And yeah, it's, it's very stressful. Uh, so I think Star of Bethlehem is useful. I also think about some of the magnolias um, from my Flora of Asia collection. The Yulon magnolia is particularly helpful for bringing your breath back, bringing your soul back into your body through your breath. We tend, when we, when we're shut down, we tend to breathe really shallowly and, you know, it's also kind of crowded and icky in there and you don't really want to, it's not a great place to be sort of doing deep breathing and your body's compressed because you're stuffed into a seat and the Yulon Magnolia can help to help your spirit re-inhabit your form as you've as you endure this, and then also as you clear that energy off of you as you leave. Lovely. And I was just reminded then too of soul support as also being helpful in that, in that situation. Oh my goodness. Yes. Especially if there's fear, you know, if there's fear of flying, you know, I think that that would be uh, a good one. Also just mimulus, just add mimulus to anything (laughs) or everything that you're doing. No, and you're right. We hadn't even we hadn't even broached the topic of somebody who has a phobia of flying because yeah, let's throw on another layer. And we're I was just talking about something that happens to absolutely everybody, but then you throw in some elements of of that fear of flying, that lack of control that you have. Um, yeah, mimulus is helpful. Soul support, I think, is really is really a useful one for that because it does help you to kind of come back into yourself um, and and get through that fear, this is where rescue remedy is really great. If you have a phobia around flying, you should be starting to take rescue remedy. Like when you buy your ticket, (laughs) cause you're already kind of triggered. You're already ahead of time getting triggered about flying, taking that. Um, and then taking the soul support, I think would be really worthwhile. Yeah. And I would add Mimulus to the, to the rescue remedy. I mean, I, I, there's so many situations where I think, you know, I, let's just have a six flower formula and add mimulus to that thing because I think about it a lot in a lot of scenarios and and that's another one. Well, I think that, that five flower can be tuned to whatever you need. And so I'll recommend that a lot where, okay, five flower is the basic shock formula or the crisis formula. But if you have an actual situation that, that sends it towards um, one of those issues, if you've had a loss of consciousness, then add double add in because it's part of it already. Clematis, clematis is part of the core formula. But if you if you dosed cl- uh, clematis into five flower formula, it tunes the formula towards that specific need. And also, like you're saying, if you're dealing with a situation that you have a known fear, then adding mimulus to five flower formula will tune five flower to your specific need. Yeah, I do that all the time. I just, I just think mimulus specifically seems to go very well with most situations that you're using five flower for. So agreed. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There's some other blends uh, by some other makers, and I've used the Delta Gardens Protection Blend and really like that for all sorts of scenarios where I feel like I want to increase my energetic boundaries. And that one has Angelica, Cinquefoil, Pennyroyal, Rue, St. John's Wort, and Yarrow. And I know from working with Pennyroyal, it's one of the most powerful protective essences I've, I've uh, made. Rue also has that energy, although I haven't made one uh, from Rue yet. Have you worked with either of those? Yes, um, I use that formula from time to time. And like you were mentioning, that formula is, is designed more as that that energetic protection from, let's say, icky influences, <laughs> you know, whatever, however you would describe that, but, but sort of, um, toxic energies. And those are generally speaking, the way that I would read it would be more like human toxic. This is an unhealthy person near me. This is an unbalanced person near me. There may be some attachments involved, that kind of thing, that that protection formula, um, from Delta is really helpful for that. The Angelica you know, sets the tone of that spiritual protection. And then those other essences are helpful for, for those different types of 
funky energies and attachments. So I completely agree. The, yeah, the ones we were talking about before, the Alaskans have so much earth energy to them. So they're, they're kind of each, each formula has its strengths. Each formula has, has different qualities that you can bring into it. And, and what you're talking about, the protection blend uh, is, is really helpful for, especially an empath, a sensitive person. When you're walking through an airport, you can be picking up on all sorts of things that these people are going through. And if you're not clear enough to recognize that's not your stuff, then it can be really a burden. Absolutely. And then there's another one, uh, Veil of Light by Jane Bell. And I've used that just a little bit, but not, I haven't had a chance to test it out in a highly intense environment like an airport or traveling. What do you think of that one? Oh, I love Veil of Light. (laughs) Veil of Light has such a high toned energy. It's so pure. It is really useful for somebody who's very, very sensitive. It, it, it absolutely has a clearing quality because it, was made from Hawaiian plants and flowers. It has that Hawaiian quality. So it has more of a warmth and enveloping, maybe even, I guess you could even say angelic quality to it. And it's not as much about, um, banishing. (laughs) It's more creating this, this, this shimmering veil around you that nothing can get through just a different, a different, um, accent on on what you're thinking about. Yeah. And it kind of goes back to what you're saying about increasing your own light, your own energy field, your sort of force around you. So, uh, I could see, I could see that, that shimmering kind of force field. Yeah. When, um, when I was working with Jane to create the, the spray version of that, that was what we were really going for with the oil blend was making sure that it had that shimmering quality to it as well. So the essences have that, they have that, that it's, it, it is like a force field. <laughs> it's why the veil of light, you know, it's this, it's, it's, you're, you're, you're encased in this wonderful shimmering bubble. And then the, the oil blend that comes with the spray just gives you more of that, gives you more concrete experience of that. Both of both formulas are, are very good for traveling. And this is, you know, we could bridge this topic into where you're going you know, where, where are you headed? Are you headed into a bunch of social situations that are also possibly somewhat uncomfortable? Um, but they probably won't involve frisking like they might at the airport, but (laughs) still (laughs) maybe less fun. I don't know. (laughs) Uh, but if you're dealing with a lot of social situations that you're maybe not that enthusiastic about, a veil of light is incredibly helpful for, for keeping you feeling in your own place, you know, integrity of your field. Yeah, I, I'm going to start using that one more and, and really, it's just, it's so lovely. I mean, I, I use it um, in passing, but it's just, it's just got a great energy. That's really cool that you were able to be a part of that. Yeah, I was uh, working as, as her assistant practitioner during that entire time of, of the creation of those essences and then the launching of that line. So I got to meet them in mother form and help with the initial research. And um, I contributed an essence to that line as well. So I'm, I'm really, I love the Hawaiian essences from Jane Bell because I know them so well. I was sort of the doula for that, that line. <laughs> helping to birth it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. They're so sweet. They have such lovely energy. So what else should we think about in an uncomfortable social event? And, and as you're saying, I think this goes on, along really well with traveling because you're basically in an environment, especially if you've traveled there it's, and it's not your own event and you don't have control at, over the, the lights and the sounds and the smells and just, you know, the, your, your environmental uh, area. And then you may be bombarded with other people's energies just the same. You might have to sit next to someone or strike up small talk with someone that you might uh, not normally um, because they're family or because it's a, you know, a work event. So there's a lot of uh, ways we could look at the formulas for this, but I mean, I think a lot of them are very similar to the, to the essences that are in some of these formulas we've been talking about. Oh, not dissimilar at all. Uh, It's the same, it's the same topic, just a slightly different um, tune. 
the sea turtle from Jane Bell's Hawaiian Essences is, is one that I think about a lot for this social interaction quality. It helps you to find a level of comfort in social interactions where they don't feel draining. They feel more supportive. So there's something that shifts within you that helps you to recognize and maybe even attract social situations and engagements that will be more supportive of you and more fun rather than the social obligations. There's, there's something really interesting about that sea turtle essence that, that helps to really shift that, that inner conversation from, Oh, I can't deal with people to, Hey, this is a person I like. I'm going to spend some time with this person. That's one that I have not tried. And I'm really curious as to the, I guess the signature of, of the turtle, is it because it has that hard shell and it can choose to poke its head in or out? I, I'm, what, what can you say about the, the um, signature of that animal that lends itself to that essence? Oh, that's such an interesting question. I have to think about that a little bit. The, the, one of the things to know about a nature essence, which is what Jane talks about, with these essences that involve animals. She made one with a, a whale essence um, and then the sea turtle essence. So, you know, the first thing to recognize is, is that, you know, no animals were harmed in the making of these essences. <laughs> it is an energetic essence of this animal and that occurred organically when the animal offered. Uh, so the, the consciousness of the animal what was drawn to work with her as to create this essence. And in this case with the sea turtle, the turtle, she, Jane was sitting there on the, on the beach and the turtle came out and walked up quite close to where she was sitting and was just resting there. So she didn't approach the turtle and certainly the turtle was not obliged to go into the bowl, <laughs> but the bowl came out <laughs> and the turtles to hung out during the time that this essence was being made. And so offering this energetic signature into, into the water. And it's, it's one of the things that I think about with sea turtle is, is that they have this ability to move between environments. They go into the water, they come out on the shore. They're, they have a, a, a wonderfully protective shell, and yet it's almost skin covered. They're, they, they have this ability to flow with these different environments and to interact as they choose. So you see them f flying in the water. They seem like they're flying in the water and, and they, they will come up to you even. They're not afraid of people and they find people interesting. And yet when they're done, off they go. So I think that the sea turtle essence has this quality of choosing the interaction and feeling safe in maybe alternate circumstances, in the water, out of the water, near people, away from people. They, they have this kind of self-contained quality, I think. Wow. Thank you for elaborating on that. I was really curious about that one in particular, you know, already having the understanding about the the way that these animal essences are 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 made. I, what a great story that it just walked up on the beach. Yeah, yeah it, it that that's the process of making essences. You know this from making flower essences. These these odd things will come about. These these odd circumstances will come about, and you just go, oh, something's happening here. This is this is not a normal circumstance. We're we're now in a liminal space. Something magical is happening. When the last time I was in Hawaii last year, I was with Jane and we were, I was working with her to remake some of these essences. And on the last day, as I was walking down to the water and saying goodbye to Hawaii and, you know, getting, I love to get my feet in the water. <laughs> and this turtle came floating, flippering up and kind of checking me out. And the Hawaiian guy who was standing really nearby, he says, oh, look, there's the turtle. And he's saying, you know, it's a blessing in the Hawaiian culture. It's a blessing when the turtles come to you. So... I love turtles. <laughs> That's beautiful. That is just beautiful. <laughs> well, some of the other essences I think about for social interaction is the other yarrows besides the white yarrow or in addition to the white yarrow, the golden yarrow and the pink yarrow. And I like how the golden yarrow helps you feel less worn out by the environment and crowds and also has that quality of 
strengthening your third chakra, just your sense of self. So it's giving you that protective energy like the white yarrow, but it's helping more of your identity stay protected. And I think that's important, especially if we're traveling to some kind of family event uh, for the holidays and we want to stay connected to, you know, who we are. I guess any social situations where sometimes you can get caught up playing a role. Some folks will have uh, trouble just staying true to themselves in their interactions, and that would be a good one for that. I think that Golden Euro is is so important for what you're talking about because if you're going into a family situation and you don't want so much being thrown at you, Golden Euro keeps your own integrity and keeps people from being able to project quite as much onto you. So what you were saying is like when you, when you get stuck in a social situation and they kind of expect you to, you to fulfill a role, the golden yarrow will help you to stay strong in yourself where they won't be able to put quite as much onto you. And I think even there's an element to golden yarrow. And I was, as, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about that <laughs> that scene in 16 candles here we are dating ourselves as gen xers um in the scene in 16 candles where the where the the lead character you know her her aunt or grandmother or something comes up to her and goes oh look you've got boobies now and <laughs> <laughs> you know that that like you just don't want that kind of attention thanks very much i just want to be doing my thing over here <laughs> And so, you know, you know how families are. They're sort of, they can be just so overwhelming with like an appearance change or, you know, oh, you cut your hair, you should have done that or you did not what, or subtle hints if you've gained weight, <laughs> just all that stuff. Like, please just give me some space. <laughs> all the things, all the things, you know, they're being helpful. I think they think they're being helpful, but you know, Golden Yo can just be like, okay, you just keep your stuff over there. <laughs> And I'll be just doing my thing over here. Right. <laughs> Pretty funny. The 16 candles reference. I love it. And I was just thinking, you know, maybe we should, we should do some, what flower essence for what movie character? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a very entertaining Instagram conversation. I think we should totally have that. We could really have some fun with that one. Yeah. I've often thought like, well, you know, the, the, the sort of archetypal characters, like what, what essence are they? Um, it, it's a fun, it's a fun conversation to have. Um, so yes, let's do that on social, everyone. <laughs> Throw some suggestions at us for these main characters. And then of course the pink yarrow, uh, especially if you're on that a spectrum of, of HSP or empath where you can take on other people's problems or energies and the pink yarrow is excellent for that. Yeah. All the yarrows have those different qualities. So if you, if you're interested in, or if you have a particular vulnerability in a particular chakra or energy center, then you can be matching the yarrows with, with whatever that energy center is, whether it's say the lavender yarrow, which helps to protect your upper chakras, um, you know, gold or, sorry, white yarrow, any of the, the, the plain yarrows, <laughs> they would be are kind of the whole system. And then you can tap in if you have a particular vulnerability or weakness in any of your, your centers for that. Yeah. It, there's, there's a lot of good help and even, um, you know, the nerves that you, from dealing with so many people and being in kind of a crowded situation, be sure to take care of yourself before you try to go to sleep. Go ahead and, you know, if you have some essence blends, go ahead and mist your room. Um, I think lavender flower essence is very helpful for getting your nerves kind of unwound. Any of the grounding formulas really helpful before you try to sleep. That's a really good time to be sure that your energy field is really clear before you try to rest and, and get some sleep. And then another thing we might want to go into more detail in on a future episode might be uh, diving in more to the uh, HSP empath and introvert unique concerns. Absolutely. Which we sort of touched on today. I like uh, working with um, those, especially since I'm all three. <laughs> so Welcome to the club. I've got a lot of, yes, uh, learned uh, experience with that one. Yeah. And there's a couple of resources that we'd like to share with you also that we'll put in the show notes, uh, some books that are really helpful for sensitive people, because I think that that's really useful to be 
you know, cognizant of, oh, I'm not alone. I, there are people like me and there's help for people like me. Yeah, very illuminating. The book uh, Quiet by Susan Cain was sort of a life changer for me when I first read it, as well as The Highly Sensitive Person by Dr. Elaine Aaron. So we'll put those links in the in the show notes. Yeah. And as always, thank you so much for listening. We're really happy to have you along on this ride. Um, the wonderful world of the flowers and nature can help us to birth a better world around us and be better people as we interact with travel and as we interact with our families or whoever else we're traveling to go see, we can be the best we can be and try to create more harmonious interactions with others around us. And if you like this podcast, please feel free to give us a review on iTunes uh, and that will help other people find it and help us get more visibility. And I also just wanted to thank those who have been interacting with us on social media because we're, you know, the conversations are excellent and it's really helpful to hear your feedback. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. We look forward to talking to you again really soon. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Flower Essence Podcast with Urkana Feld and Kathleen Aspens, and we appreciate your interest in connecting with nature on a deeper level. You can find us online at theflowerescencepodcast.com or join us on Facebook and continue the discussion. This podcast is meant for educational and entertainment purposes only. We are not physicians and do not diagnose, prescribe, or treat medical conditions. Please consult with your own physician or healthcare practitioner regarding the suggestions and recommendations made by the hosts and guests of the Flower Essence Podcast.